Hey guys, my name is Ben and together with MP we have been rebuilding this big wooden two-masted schooner for the past three and a bit years. Recently we have been posting every single day. So recently that is day 13 today that we have been posting every single day because we feel like we're on this last stretch and we're really just getting as many episodes in to show you guys what we do every single day. Yesterday we finished the day by epoxying all the through holes, all the holes in the hull that we made. And today is the day where we were gonna install them all. But I just remembered we also sent the through holes for the bilge pumps off to get extended. So we won't be able to do those three, but we do have the two bronze through holes that we can install for the forward starboard head. Uh, so the in and the outlet of the aloo. As always, thank you so much for coming here to this video and uh, let's get this boat launched. What's your plan for today? Uh, start with one thing and then we'll just do the rest. What's that <laughs> one thing you're going to start with? I want to go to the bow locker to finish up the pump that we installed yesterday, first thing. And then I want to help you with what you're doing. Yeah, the same. I'm just going to start and see where we get. Best case scenario, we finish the boat today. Look how beautiful this is. MP fixed all of this. It might have been a very detailed episode, not our usual one, but I'm so proud of MP for what she did here. Oh yeah, of course you need to plug it in. So proud, little electrician. Thanks, love. It is so hot in this boat. So we're gonna open all the windows because the wind is coming from starboard. On the right side of the boat. What is it, you know? I don't know, I'm not gonna give any direction details, but we can really let this hot air just blow out finally one more every time we arrive we have to connect the boat to 220 there's this hole here which is used for i think it was a hose we had a shower here a freshwater shower which we don't want because that kind of caused the deck to rot now we have this running i don't know if you guys know this or have noticed it in any of the videos Two, uh, three little sockets over here. They plug this in. Let's see, like that. Then we just have, I think, five sockets on the end of this extension cable, which we connect the 220 to 24 volt inverter, the temporary one. And then we have the 24 volt system and then a bunch of sockets to use like fans, charge all our drills and stuff. And I'll go down there into the workshop and I'll show you where we plug into the another another extension cable. What are you eating? <laughs> she always it's a bone from yesterday's barbecue. She always gets them and buries them. And now she's having fun. There we go. Now we've got power on the boat. There. And you still need to tidy up this one. I forgot about it. Let's see. Nice, beautiful bronze. Through hole over here. Oh well, yeah, something else we can do today. I'm gonna to remove these valves and put the elbow joints in already because they're gonna be pointing upwards and we've already got those. So I'm gonna put the through holes in here, this side. And then we can start working on the elbow joints, valves, and the hose connectors. And then when that, that, that's done, we need the siphon and the hose, and then connect to the toilet. Sounds easy. Let's see if it is. I'm not even going to use tape. I used tape on the other side and it was just, I mean, it's the anti-fouling. I mean, it's the underwater lines. So of course, it's, I could just sand it, paint anti-fouling. Bronze is going to go on. So I'm just going to get this secret on, get these two through holes and then go in and tighten them.
two are done. I'm not gonna put hose connectors on here now. Well, I could actually, we'll see. I'll see how my gut instinct feels because I wanna let the Sikaflex dry first or cure before I start pulling on that thread to tighten the hose connectors and uh, elbow joints. So I'm gonna go into the other one, the other side over there and just connect those ones that are ready. And now that it's raining and sunny and raining, you'll see this camera lens steam up loads. But yeah, in Brazil they say faz parte, which means it's all part, it's all part of it. It's sailing. One thing we really focused on when placing this Bimini, we're gonna have pins in this to like fasten all the ropes and we wanted it in front so it wasn't gonna be in the way. And uh, we managed, which I'm quite happy with. You see the grid here in the bow is not only good looking, but also useful as we can put the rope through here and tie this. I'm really happy with how this turned out to look. the bow locker because I feel that yesterday it was so hot in here I mean today it's hot as well but we were working here and our brains were foggy and I ended up leaving some stuff unexplained so I'm here again to calmly explain what we did here yesterday so uh, we have the boot from here and as you can tell the installation was very different from the other ones that we did before and why is that here the bow locker if you count like all the curves that the wire has to do from here all the way to the switch up there, I believe it's like almost 12 meters, which is a very long distance for a wire. And even though this pump at 24 volts takes like 5 amps, because the distance is so long, we needed like a 10 millimeter thick wire, which feels a bit like an overkill for just a switch and a pump that doesn't take much. So what we did here was exactly the same thing as we did for the anchor windlass and we worked with a relay system. I don't want to get in detail about the explanation for that because I did that before so I don't want to be repetitive. In case you missed it, uh, I'm going to put here somewhere the link so you can go and watch the episode of the installation of the relay box for the anchor windlass and then there's the explanation in more detail why we're re using relay. The relay allows me to bring a uh, thinner wire to the relay and then the power will just come from the relay to the pump. That's a very silly way of explaining it but that's like very very a summary of that. This wago that's here is because the wire of the pump has a limit, it cannot go higher than this and we want things to be very high so it's not underwater but I'm gonna add here a wago gel box that can be underwater so there's no problem with that. The thing that I'm gonna do in the engine room, remember I mentioned that, that I was gonna put those connectors inside a waterproof box. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here. So this will be protected against water and then the relay box will be the one uh, controlling the whole situation here. And we are borrowing power from the anchor windlass box that we had done before with uh, bus bar positive and negative exactly for this purpose so we could put devices here just connecting from there so that is the explanation I wanted to do here also I came to organize the wires better <laughs> as you can see it's a bit like messy like that I even left that box open because I had to disconnect those wires in order to shut the box but it was so hot, we were so tired that staying an extra minute here felt too long. So we did 
just like the bare minimum so we could leave and then today slowly I'm gonna disconnect those wires they were just an improv shut that box organize everything here I'm gonna at least leave this nice so relay box pump there with the sapinho with the little frog how we call it here in Brazil and borrowing power from there I think now you have a better overview of our system and I'm glad that I managed to come back here and explain this to you there must be a rainbow somewhere because I can feel the first drops of rain but it's still sunny but I cannot see it but just knowing it might be somewhere is already a good thought it's good enough for me and rain Ow. Okay, I had to really quickly go and shut all those windows, shut the bow locker. The top of the bow locker hatch has been corked, but not got any compound on it yet, so that tarp has to go on. Now, this happens so, so fast. What else here? We've got a nice sink here and a cardboard box that should go in. But yeah, welcome to boat building in Brazil. Hot during the day, thunderstorms in the evening. all these switches that MP fixed oh and the panel there see now a boat works like a boat should work so I think I have light now Let's see there we go it's kind of fun but it's getting used to having a boat that works properly with the electrics anyway got these washers two washers and two nuts and we're done with these at least and then we can start putting all the elbow joints on all these through holes and then elbow joints valves and then hose connectors This one's going to come up through the water line, above the water line through a siphon, into the toilets, and then toilet, and then it's going to go out up here through a siphon above the water line, and out this way. Um, I don't think I can do it on the other toilet yet because I just placed a seeker and I don't want to be like forcing the through hole itself before the seeker has dried, so that will be for another day. I'm very happy this is done and I'm kind of like run out of ideas right now because it's raining a lot. You can see now the sun's out and it's going to storm again but no point epoxying today. Look at this humidity. It's all coming off me into the world. If you ever wonder why it's humid, it's because I'm here under the deck. Anyway, I'll call this one a wrap. Tomorrow I'll put the other ones on when the seeker has dried. Whoa. Do you know the name of that tool? The orange one? Pipe wrench. What other names does it have? One at a time. Okay, these wires 
fire they need to come like officially through here and the red one officially through here so we need to make a hole on the box add those waterproof thingies there so we didn't have the time to do that but that's the proper job that we're gonna do eventually here for the positive and here for the negative but not today because it's weekend the shops are shut and i need to get more of those so for now i just wanted to undo that so i could leave this nice and shut it was really hot again in the bow locker i was really struggling and the camera kept shutting off because it was too hot as well so I think there were just signs for me to call it a day, you know, some days things are just not flowing the way they should and we just have to accept it. As we have a tight deadline, we don't want to accept it, but then it's just not good for us, for no one. So I'm calling it a day. It's too hot and humid. I'm done. We decided to come today after editing just to get or finish some small jobs so and peer into the bow locker quickly but it kept raining and we had to keep shutting it and as it's not uh, sealed properly that lid we had to keep putting the tarp and those stones on. They didn't have to be those stones but they were the nearest so we kept doing it. I've managed to work on those two through holes. I hope next week I can get those above the waterline bilge pump through holes because that's a really cool job and when they are in I think I can call all the through holes a wrap then we could really connect all the hoses which is a very exciting part i was really thinking of starting the next job for example like sanding the sacrificial keel and already putting the first layers of primer on for example today and i want to start drilling these holes and maybe putting some epoxy in here but that over there you see wasn't allowing me to do so. Anything I start today is just gonna get ruined later when the rain comes. And P and I really appreciate you watching these videos. Uh, we are putting a lot of effort in these daily videos. There are up days and down days, of course, depending on weather and the jobs. Uh, but thank you so much. It really means a lot to us and all your support in the comment section as well. It doesn't go unnoticed, we do read it. And uh, thank you so much for being here and we'll see you tomorrow for another episode. If you have any ideas, by the way, of things you want to see, like yes, we have our whole to-do list of things to do before launching, but if there are any things you want to see specifically of the yard, the area, the boat, whatever, just let us know in the comments. And uh, as I'm doing daily, and as we're doing daily videos anyway, we can literally just go and film those things for you. Like I don't know, in boat interiors, I see I've seen you guys like those as well, like fishing boat interiors. Uh, maybe another construction, another boat build. I don't know. Let us know what you think. Uh, see you guys tomorrow.